G'day everyone, my name is Kupalit, and welcome to a, a, a direct reaction. <laughs> First one of these I've done. I actually wanted to do one for the Pokemon Direct earlier this year, but if I remember correctly on the timing of that, I believe that was just before we moved. So I wasn't really able to do that, because we're busy moving. Um, so that was unfortunate, especially since big Pokemon fan. I would have really liked to have been in Pokemon Direct, but it just would have been too much of a mess to try and do at the time that it happened, which is unfortunate. But at least we finally have a regular Direct uh, to do a reaction to. Obviously, there was also the Animal Crossing Direct, but I wasn't really sure if I was even going to get Animal Crossing at the point, so I didn't really want to bother doing a reaction to that, um, especially before a general direct or Pokemon direct. Like, if you're going to start doing a direct reaction, generally best to do it with either uh, some form of general direct or a direct that you have invested interest in, like Pokemon for me, or Xenoblade if there was ever, you know, there's another Xenoblade one, or Fire Emblem, I guess. Something that I'm actually invested in versus Animal Crossing, which I have never played before. <laughs> Granted, going to be playing it. Um, still haven't decided how... Yet, I'm leaning towards digital very heavily, because it's one of the few games that makes sense for me to do digital. I prefer physical. Um, but just the style of what Animal Crossing is. But it's just... It's just a little problem that I've had. See, I have, like, about $25 of rewards at Best Buy saved up. My Elite status recently expired from getting, getting my Surface a little over a year ago uh, for Pokemon League that's now cancelled, because virus. Stupid viruses. Um, but I wasn't really sure if I wanted to use that on Animal Crossing because I'm getting it, or you know, very heavily leaning towards getting it digitally, which means this would be the perfect opportunity to actually take advantage of the Den of the program. 100 bucks, uh, spent it on two $60 games, you save 20 bucks overall across two games. But... I need a second game to buy digitally. Now, granted, it lasts a year, so I have a year to decide. But because I prefer physical, I can't really think anything off the top of my head. That'd be $60 that I want to buy digitally, except maybe Mystery Dungeon. Maybe, but I'd still kind of prefer physical for that. So, it's been a bit of a dilemma. What to do with a, uh, do I do the voucher program or do I just get it through Best Buy and also get, you know, for five dollars more the cute little patchy dealy? Um, because they have, have a little, like, bell bag that's actually, you know, a proper bag. It's cute. Um, but I could do that, you know, or do the voucher program, but I don't know what's coming out. No one knows what's coming out this year. And it's, infuriating because if we just we don't know what to expect um especially since like even trying to make predictions for like what will be in direct is hard because there's not a lot um there's been so many switch games that have already come out that if you look at like the different properties that nintendo has right and think about, okay, which of these can have a game? They are either already have a game, have had a game too recently to do another iteration in that genre uh, or uh, property or specific subsection of property. We'll get into the details in a minute. Um, or they're in development hell. Or we know they're being made, but they are either not going to be ready this year Metro Prime 4, uh, or are things that you wouldn't expect to be revealed yet. Um, things that I would expect to be revealed at not E3, since E3 got cancelled. Side note, um, obviously the Nintendo Direct for E3 will still kind of happen, whether or not they'll call it the E3 Direct or not is a question mark. Um, but I mean, they're still going to do a Direct around then. Uh, like, everyone else is going to do, you know, you know move into online presentations because of COVID-19. Uh, but I'm really hoping they are able to figure something out for Treehouse, because Treehouse is honestly the most important part of Nintendo's E3. 
for everyone that's not at E3. <laughs> and obviously no one's going to be at E3 this year, so it's even more important. <laughs> um, but it's going to be really hard for them to do because it's centered around having, you know, the different these different developers for a lot of these different games all coming together and you know being all, you know there with the treehouse talking about it and how do you do that it's like do you tell a conference them in how do you handle you know handling the games themselves and it's it's going to be a nightmare for them to try and logistically do a treehouse um without having people together especially in terms of like the third party developers that they tend to have on the treehouses as well talking about their games it's not easy <laughs> i'm hoping that they can figure something out because treehouse is so important to being able to see more of the games and really get an idea of what these games are really like beyond just the you know, announcements and the trailers which only give you so much of an idea there's a reason why let's play is so popular they're a way not only to you know have some entertainment around a game but also a way for people to learn about a game so and that's how i've come to decision to buy animal crossing despite the fact that animal crossing has never been a thing that i've ever been really interested in despite loving things like farm simulators like uh story of seasons of the humbus moon and stardew valley things like that loving simulation games like sims sim city and loving um well i guess those are the two main ones <laughs> to point out you know in terms of like similar ish games obviously sim city isn't really that similar but sims is um in being your life simulator but the thing that animal crossing never had previously to really draw me in was the well it's also like minecraft too in terms of you know another sort of sandboxy game you know simulation game um though very different time but you're not having those sorts of minecrafty elements of being able to make your own world you know the creativity aspect of it um as much as what you know horizons does and that's what's drawing me in having your own island, being able to determine where everything is. Top of that, the crafting elements also make things more, you know, like every item, more important. Um, you know, it makes them you know, more usable. Uh, or not, well, not made, sorry, every item, but more of the items. You know, more important to actually have a better function in the game. So, you know, those sorts of additions make it much more interesting to me but it took me actually seeing the game being played for me to really decide yeah actually this is up my alley i'm gonna try this um because the previous ones i have seen the gameplay of it i realized not quite what i want uh this one is so i'm hoping that they can figure something out for that tension over so yeah trying to predict games for this is just it's just hard <laughs> It, you know, between what's already been released, what's been released recently, what we know is already in the works, and what we figure, you know, like Breath of the Wild sequel, and if there is another Mario Odyssey, Mario Odyssey 2, which they're probably working on, because they never did DLC for that, despite the fact that they've been deal doing DLC for a lot of their big sellers recently, and that game sold like hotcakes. <laughs> uh, you'd think they would do more of it, but they haven't, so presumably doing a second one, similar to how Breath of the Wild sequel came about apparently started as dlc and evolved into its own game i can see the same thing happening with my odyssey but you expect those to be you know, part of the big direct the big QA direct especially since they're going to be holiday releases like both of them um the only way either of them wouldn't be is if they were going to be you know launch titles for the next generation of switch um which at this point i the Switch Pro being like a you know, side upgrade to the Switch could still happen, but I suspect at this point that they're probably just holding out to do like a Switch 2, because honestly, it's probably be better for them anyways. Um, especially since how expensive technology for things like the Switch are. It's, it, it's hard to make a powerful Switch that isn't a thousand bucks. You can't with the, the power of these big, bulky, honking consoles. Oh, they're so much powerful, so much better you know, graphics and everything. So much faster. Well, yeah, because they're big, giant, bulking consoles. <laughs> Switch is tiny. It's using mobile technology, which is expensive. Um, and battery technology is been stuck in a rut. Too, which doesn't help. Um... 
So just trying to like figure out, okay, what could even be in a direct? It's been hard. Because so many of the things that we expect are still a ways away. Um, and we don't, in terms of like what this year's holiday title is going to be, we're not going to probably know that until June. So we can't even think about that <laughs> yet, really. Um, the other things we've really had is the knowledge that there would be Animal Crossing updates. Okay, but that's just for a game. Smash updates. Okay, that's for a game that's already out. And Xenoblade Chronicles. That's about it. <laughs> and lo and behold, those are the three things that got spoiled for me for this direct. <laughs> uh, the three things that I was actually, even before today, was like, yeah, those are going to be, whenever this direct happens, those are going to be the first three things I talk about, because those are like, almost guaranteed to be in that direct. Went to, you Google uh, Nintendo Direct this morning to see if they happened to do a surprise direct, since they didn't announce one yesterday. Lo and behold, first result... News article talking Xenoblade Chronicles, Animal Crossing, and Smash. It's like, gee, thanks for spoiling it for me. God, why the hell do you put that in the headline? Jeez. So we'll talk about those three first. Because those are the three I expected. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Expected that, because I mean it was announced at the end of the year. The 10th anniversary of its release in Japan is June 10th of this year. So we're expected to come out probably beginning of June, which would be like right around when the naughty three direct will happen. Um, so it would make sense to talk about it now, rather than you know, and just maybe like give you like a little brief reminder of it of the naughty three direct, rather than taking up a bunch of time then and saying, "Oh, but this is next week." Well, <laughs> tell us about it now ahead of time, so that way you get us pre-ordering it now and not you know having it compete amongst all the other stuff that's going to be revealed then. You know, it makes more sense. And it could always be released, like, slightly before then, anyways. Uh, no idea when it's going to release. We'll find out. I presume, you know, May or June. Uh, to coincide with the 10th anniversary. But, you know, because of the 10th anniversary, and I already revealed, expected a bit more information, because all we got was, like, like a really brief look um, at, like, some scenes, new cut scenes. And your know, little views of the world uh, to see the, you know, the improvements in the graphics, and then a very, very, very brief look at the Bionic shoulder, uh, which you know was previously cut from the game. So nice to see that actually being brought back, especially since it's a massive area, it's huge, and they didn't finish it. It's like ah. whether or not they'll you know slide it into the story where it seems like it originally was going to be, or just have it as post game thing. Then uh, we'll see. Um, Animal Crossing updates. Duh, of course, they're going to talk about that if they're doing a direct now because they're, you know, it already mentioned that they'd be doing updates for it. Um, Easter's just around the corner. Um, none of the holiday stuff is in the game currently. They're doing this part, you know, updates throughout the year. So now that the game's come out, just be time to talk about it. Makes sense. Smash, I expected the first character of the second DLC pack to be revealed here. You got six of them this time, I think. It is six, right? Yeah, because the first one was five, and then they were doing one more this time, so you got six. <laughs> so yeah, reveal the first one here. Makes sense. And maybe like some other updates if they want to add in another mode again, like they did with Home Run Derby contest. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it is just character, regardless. That was about it. <laughs> That I could really predict, like maybe Pants Dragoon info, because I do remember that being uh, revealed last time. I do know that's a classic game. I have zero interest in it. If I'm going to play a rail shooter, I'll play Star Fox. <laughs> um, but still, uh, I know a lot of people do like it. But like, what, what else? You already mentioned Breath of the Wild sequel and Mario Odyssey. That's probably June. What else we got? Well. We got the development hell ones. Bayonetta 3. Baby. Don't know. Honestly, at this point, don't expect it. Um, maybe the June. Direct. Shin Megami Tensei 5. <laughs> so revealed like two, three years ago. It was revealed really early on in the Switch's lifespan. Might have actually been like the first batch of games uh, revealed. I don't remember exactly when it was revealed. Um, but... It might have been like the first E3 direct. 
It's just hard to remember. It's been so long. Still not out. <laughs> Still no word on it whatsoever. <laughs> like two games that just been going on forever. And speaking of development hell, Metroid Prime 4. Next year at the earliest. It's not coming out this year. It's, it's been too soon. They had to restart from scratch, basically. I don't expect anything for next year. Um, same for if they do port the Metroid Prime trilogy uh, to Switch. I expect that to be announced probably at the same time that Metro Prime 4 is announced, honestly. Um, like, the Metro Prime Trilogy will be out super soon, and the Metro Prime Trilogy... Oh, no, Metro Prime Trilogy. Metro Prime 4 will be out at the end of the year, sort of thing. You know? Makes sense. Um, yeah. Then you have, like, Wii U ports. You still got a few of those. Uh, Pikmin 3, or Pikmin Trilogy. And obviously there's always a possibility of a Pikmin 4 as well. But, <laughs> uh, Pikmin. Pikmin is unpredictable. Its development is an endless enigma. It comes out of nowhere when it is announced, then just disappears into the ether for years, and then just comes back out of the blue, out of nowhere again. <laughs> It's, you can't predict when or if Pikmin games will come. And as such, I will you will never ever see me predict Pikmin to be shown. I will always say that it is a possibility. It is a possibility in like every general direct every single time, but you can't predict it. You just can't. Um Super Mario 3D World, that's one I would expect them to port soon. Uh, particularly, I would expect them to port it and release it before a Mario Odyssey 2 gets announced. Because uh, Mario Odyssey 2 is just going to eat into all of its sales as soon as it's announced. <laughs> so, you want to announce that first. Uh, and then, Old Zelda's. Um, primarily Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. It's like Skyward Sword is also a possibility. But honestly, Twilight Princess HD and Skyward Sword I don't see as being great possibilities because of the Wiimote functionalities in those games. It's you know Even with the Joy-Cons, it's not going to translate that well. And frankly, those control schemes aren't that great. Um, obviously, it's not as bad as Twilight Princess. It's just in Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword is way, 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 way worse. Um, Twilight Princess would be easier to figure out. It's not that bad. Um, in fact, does it have a mode that you can just use the Pro Controller? For the Wii Wii U? I think there might be. In which case, that wouldn't be too bad. But if any of them's going to be ported up, I would imagine probably be Wii Wind Waker. Wind Waker's easier. Uh, and also easier to get it to work on the system, too. I'm mean, granted, Twilight Princess HD should work on the system just fine, too, but still. <laughs> uh, also, you know, personal bias, I want to play Wind Waker. <laughs> so it's, you know, I was both so happy when Wind Waker HD got announced, like, hey! HD remake, uh, remake of Wind Waker, and also so disappointed that it was on the Wii U. <laughs> it's like, uh, why? Uh, why couldn't you just wait to do it on Switch? But uh, beyond that, I can't really think. Is there any, even anything else on Wii U that they could port up? I feel like there's one thing I'm missing, but I'm not sure on that. That would be a you know, good possibility. I don't expect Star Fox Zero. Uh, so yeah, I don't really expect much else. And then you look at everything beyond that, right? Look at the Mario's. Mario 3D, Odyssey. Mario 2D, don't expect one because of... Yet, at least for a little while. Uh, because of Mario Maker 2. Honestly, I would expect update to Mario Market 2 before I would expect 2D Mario again. Um, look at Zelda. 2D Zelda, we just had one in Link's Awakening Remake. Um, 3D Zelda, that's Breath of the Wild sequel, so gotta wait on that. Um, Donkey Kong, don't really expect anything for at all, um, especially since I believe their name is Next Level Games, if I'm right. That was did the Donkey Country Returns series. Um, I believe they're the ones that were working on Metro Prime 4, so they're kind of busy. Uh, I'll put a correction up if I'm wrong on that. Um... God, what else? What else? What else? What else? Obviously, already mentioned Pikmin. 
and she thinks they're being delayed. Because the delay's coming out. Bayo's delayed. Um, Mario Kart doesn't make any sense when Mario Kart 8 is still selling so damn well. It's ridiculous. Um, Mario Party, that's a possibility. They never did DLC for the Mario Party, which is my biggest bugbear with that game. There's, like, little issues with that game, but those are, you know, easy to overlook. The lack of boards is the problem with that Mario Party game. Super Mario Party. Otherwise, it's a great Mario Party game. Just needed more boards. Four is not enough. Especially with how that Mario Party game was. Just needed more. Um, but there's always a possibility of, you know, maybe doing another Mario Party. But I also don't expect it right now because of COVID. It just... The type of game that Mario Party is. I mean, it's literally Mario Party. Get people together to play the game. Well, it does have a place right now in our mass quarantines around the world. Um, with families being stuck together. Having a game to play together. At the same time... With it also being about, you know, gathering like friends together. Or having a party and playing Mario Party during it. It just doesn't mesh well with the current state of light so even if they had it ready to release today i would expect it to get delayed um until we're past covid19 um mario tennis we already have mario golf that's a possibility so yeah there's this one um hmm. pokemon no i obviously wouldn't even be in this direct but we're not gonna have a pokemon direct until the beginning of next year most likely um, that's when we'll have an next Pokemon game. Obviously, we have the DLCs. Maybe we get, like, a little bit of information on the first Pokemon DLC here. I honestly expect them to do it on their own. I did notice, I did get an email uh, for Pokemon about the Gigantamax moves for the starters. Um, maybe that might be in here since that was in an email sent today. So, maybe we'll see that. I haven't looked at any of the actual information beyond just what the subject line of the email was. So if it is in here, we'll get to see that together. Um, and that it would be technically DLC news, because that's part of the first DLC. Um, mom, 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 what else? Okay, just trying to think through like what the Nintendo properties are. Um, <laughs> Splatoon 3, not coming anytime soon. Um, Splatoon 2 is doing fine. Doesn't need a sequel yet. Um, God, I'm honestly trying. I'm also kind of starting to blank, you know, because like we're past like the main properties. Oh, that is one thing. SNES games. We have not had enough SNES games on the SNES Online. Release more Nintendo, please. <laughs> Want a good way to you sell tons of memberships? Right now, in the midst of this quarantine, release Mother 3. <laughs> That's a way to get people to buy on. Um, I'm just thinking of Mother games, honestly. But I mean, like Mother 3, especially. Oh, actually, I think, is it Earthbound already on the SNES online? It might be. So yeah, Mother 3. <laughs> um, and the Donkey Kong Countries. As well, please and thank you. Um, oh, my Donkey Kong Countries. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? So I suppose you know, say the Donkey Countries. There, it's a Donkey Kong thing that they can do. Um, uh, it's it's just hard to think because like so much of the stuff is just already out, and like, what do you do? I mean, this was always going to be a tough, kind of a tough year for them, just in terms of you know, like transitioning to the next phase of you know some of these properties. You know, uh, you know the next two D Zelda is going to be a bit. You know, the three D Zelda is in process. The three D Mario probably in process. Two D Mario probably best to wait a little bit longer. Um, got things that are in development hell, uh, and it's just timing for this year wasn't great for a lot of properties because they've released so many games these past few years honestly more than they usually do um helped by the fact that they only have one console to develop for instead of two it helps a lot 
um, not having to split their intention up between two consoles. Uh, so, well, you know, I think it's te- you know, it might be like, slightly less games overall than what we had between the two consoles previously. It's a lot more games for any one console than what we had previously. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it that I can really talk about. You know, obviously the obvious predictions I already get spoiled on. We know, I know they're going to be in here. Um, yeah, just kind of interested in seeing where they're going. We've been waiting so long for this. It's been, I remember something last night saying like 200 days. <laughs> if it's true, that's insane. Since we had a, a general direct, uh, regardless, it has been a very, very long time, a record long time. And this is something that a lot of us Nintendo fans and Switch owners kind of need right now in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis. Just having something to look forward to, right? Something to look forward to on the other end of this tunnel. Slash during the tunnel. Because <laughs> it's going to take a while to get through this virus. Especially since even once we do get past this first wave, it could just come back. <laughs> uh, and then we have to do all this nonsense all over again. Um... As it is, this wave's going to last a while, especially when you have states like Mississippi, you know, governor overruling all the local authorities and not letting them properly quarantine because he's a goddamn idiot. <laughs> uh, gotta hate the idiots. Dumb people thinking they know better, more concerned about economy than they do care about people's lives, which is probably part of the reason why this is only a mini direct and not a full direct um, and why it's taken so long. Uh, for this to come out, because lives are more important than telling us what games are coming out. And also, they have to figure out what games are even going to be able to come out, because they're going through this crisis, too. <laughs> and they're also having to worry about, you know, effects to the manufacturing of the cartridges and everything, as well as switches. Um, that is one other thing. Pokemon Sleep! We haven't gotten any news on that yet. Probably, uh, at this point, also getting delayed further than whatever it was we were waiting on. Um, is the fact that it has a periphery that is probably going to get affected by manufacturing problems from COVID-19. Not to mention distribution of that periphery would be difficult to do, more difficult than games, um, in the midst of all this. So, don't expect anything from that here either. Maybe not E3. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, we got some good surprises here. It is 28 minute 28 and a half minutes which is surprisingly long for the mini direct when i heard it was a mini direct i was thinking like okay i'm what 15 20 minutes 28 it's like it's almost 30 minutes so it'll be a decent amount here granted like half of that could be zoomed by chronicles but i kind of doubt it <laughs> but anyways let's go ahead and get started and see Boop. COVID-19 release dates and other information presented in this video are subject to change. We're just talking about this. Potential updates, please check official Nintendo websites and social media as well as other publications. Our hearts go out to all those impacted by COVID-19 during this challenging time. Barely had enough time to read that. <laughs> Good thing I'm a fast reader. Mini! Nice little jingle. Long ago, Dinoblade. two great titans came into existence. The Bionis and the Maconis. That looks so much better. <laughs> the Titans were locked in a timeless battle. Until at last, only their lifeless corpses remained. Huh? In the sky! No way. It's a... Mechon. Commence the assault on Bionis. Same old classic voice acting. This looks so much better. ...against the Mechon armor. If we could just... ...unlock the Monado's power. It's my turn! Shulk! No! It'll kill you! Shulk! Yeah, it will. <laughs> there was something strange. It was as if I could see into the future. 
I know you won't believe this, but Shulk can see the future. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. It's not me. <laughs> you literally just said that. Power of the Monado. And so it begins. Uh, of the Bionis. The classic semi cringy voice acting that's still endearing. The future I see, it isn't set. So I can use this power to change the future. And that's exactly what I need to do. Mekon. It's not over. The people of Bionis will never let you triumph. Yeah. Yeah, end of May. So just before tenth anniversary. Ah, so there is gonna be a post game. Okay. And I guess that's when we get to go to the shoulder. If the capital is on the shoulder, there are people there. I thought you'd want to go. Maybe a bit of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 tie-in too. The ultimate version of a modern classic. Xenoblade this looks so good. Definitive edition. On Nintendo Switch, the game looks better and plays smoother than ever before. The battle HUD and menu screens are easy to read and easy to use. Yeah, it's so much cleaner than before. And some of the music has been re-recorded. Ooh, nice. Now you can fully immerse in the majesty of this vast world. Ah, the falls. And a new epilogue, a new story. Future Connected will cap off the main game. So if you've played and loved the original game, you can not only revisit it... Nice large text, too. That's Shulk. good. Good thing I came prepared. We'll probably be needing this. Xenoblade Chronicles definitive... And that'd be why they were recording May new lines as well, because it's post-game now. Also, coming on May 29th, the Xenoblade Chronicles definitive works set will pack in a 250-page art book. Getting? <laughs> I love art books. So much. Hi everyone, and, and especially for Xenoblade. <laughs> We've got news on I'm very, very much very very much looking forward to that. And we're focusing on a selection of them coming out this year. Now, let's roll through some headlines, shall we? I would hope if you're doing this direct now, it's all about things coming this year. <laughs> Most beloved series are coming soon to the Nintendo Switch system. What do we mean by beloved? Oh. Oh. Okay. Bioshock and uh, Borderlands 2. That's surprising. And also not. I mean, they're old enough games at this point that they would run, but it's more surprising they're taking the time to, to bother. Oh, and I yeah, didn't know. Right. Duh. I saw the group. So I guess, yeah, I guess Bioshock Collection is both Bioshocks. Shame will be Borderlands 3, <laughs> but not sure that it would run on Switch. Oh, I didn't... Did they sh show that previously? In the little spiel? Yeah, XCOM, that's... That makes a lot of sense, honestly. Why haven't they done that sooner? <laughs> Also, this is a kind of a, a dumb way to put this trailer together. But still, nice. Borderlands 2 is a classic, Bioshock's a classic. And next comes a classic, so, you know. <laughs> we'll have to go back and look at the box art there on the Borderlands to see what that was all concluding. Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order Expansion Pass. You so-called heroes have filled this world too many times. That was not great voice acting. Or I suppose it's less bad voice acting as bad Richards. balancing. 
bad audio balancing. <laughs> Which granted, I'm not particularly great at either, but you know, I'm an amateur <laughs> with no experience in it. Galactus. I'm more so curious on why. Doom must become a god himself. Okay. <laughs> okay, that that was a bad line. Um more so curious on why Fantastic Four wasn't in the game to begin with, considering it's a central Marvel property, but eh. unexplored aquatic world. In this deep sea exploration game, you collect resources to upgrade your gear. Craft items and dive deeper into the abyss. As you explore increasingly hostile environments, you better watch those oxygen and pressure levels. And if that's not challenging enough, Shinsekai's time attack mode, another dive, boasts a perilous maze for you to race through, culminating with a final monstrous threat. You know, it's it can get pretty heavy down there. So definitely looks interesting. It's got an interesting art style, but definitely not for me. It's not the sort of style I particularly care for for this sort of thing. Interesting take on kind of a 2D kind of sort of platformer game. Enjoying island life in the Animal Crossing New Horizons game? Hopefully soon. <laughs> Whether you're already living it up on the island, or you're still planning your departure, there's an event coming up and we're happy to spill the beans. Er, crack the eggs? You see, after downloading the free update we made available at launch, one zipper T Bunny will visit your island in celebration of Bunny Day in early April. <laughs> Can you hunt down the egg zipper head everywhere? <laughs> Fishing up Easter eggs. <laughs> Plus, you can craft these special limited time items from the egg series. The Bunny Day event only comes once a year, <laughs> this time from April 1st to April 12th. So be sure to participate. Yep. Their and Easter event, what? basically. There's another free update coming later in April. It'll usher in some newly added features, including the Earth Day event. Of course, we'll continue to bring you the latest on updates and more views. Earth Day is early June, isn't it? So that would make sense. So, stay tuned. We hope you enjoy the updates and everything else about your life on the deserted island. It is such a cute game. I will, I will uh, Everything about Animal Crossing is cute. Look, someone's hiring. Oh, this is your dad's company? Apparently, they offer a wide range of services. The job description entails many responsibilities. You'll deliver items, mop the floor, and maintain a comfortable work environment. They're <laughs> trusting you with crane operation and other tough tasks. Whoops. <laughs> uh -oh. Kind of reminds me of won't do. the advertisements for that? Portal 2. Whether you conduct yourself in a professional manner or opt for more creative solutions, <laughs> do what you need to do to get the job done. Yeah, definitely reminded me of those Hopefully world tier animations. And that's that's a good thing, because um because good job launches those were always always so good and hilarious. And fun to watch, and having a game kind of embodying that idea. Coming to Nintendo Switch. This is Caroline, right? Next step in his relationship, commitment phobic Vincent finds Catherine. Into the allure Wrong seat name. <laughs> Looks like poor Vincent's caught in a love quadrangle with Catherine. Catherine with a C and Rin. Little does he know, temptation might lead to his own demise. In this cult classic, your choices will affect how their relationships unfold, and it only gets weirder. Deservedly, not only is Vincent riddled with guilt during the day, he's also not sleeping so soundly. Every night, his nightmares consist of a crumbling tower of puzzle blocks that he must climb in order to survive and see another day. Find out if love is over for our troubled bachelor in this dark, intense, and intoxicating story 
when Catherine full body releases on Nintendo Switch. Definitely not for me. <laughs> no, not my style of thing. The Ring Fit Adventure game will pump up its audio. Oh, that's good. It actually did surprisingly well, and it's a really, really, you know, good idea. It's having a bit of extra stuff to do with it. It's good. With the new rhythm game mode. If you want to set a high score, you got to get your body moving to the beat. Speaking of, there are 17 music tracks in the rhythm game. We're talking music from Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So it's definitely, you know, a nice extra mode for it to increase the longevity and interest in the game. Your companion, Ring, will now have a female voice option. Nicely done. Move. That's nice. And you'll also be able to change languages. Feel free to change it up in the settings whenever you want. Good just to have more options for it as well. Give it a little bit more love to the game. We're also adding in a new jogging option in both the custom and quick play modes. When you're not in a battling mood, you can simply run through a variety of fields. Oh, that's nice. This free update for the Ring Fit Adventure game will be yeah, just more options. Um, you know, make a better incentive to people to go back to it, and do more exercise, especially when we're all kind of stuck inside. RPG <laughs> at the moment. Since 1990, the King's Bounty series has been influencing the evolution of Western RPGs. I've never heard of it. <laughs> with a fresh look and a new approach, this straight-up sequel will pit army against army sending the player on a quest around the world to save the world. This time, the graphics are more realistic. Your choices matter more than ever. And so does the terrain you stand on. So master your surroundings like the It looks kind of... You graphically at least looks kind of... Yeah, meet new just people okay. Graphics and affinities are informed by the new character development system. Find out just how deep the gameplay will get. When King's Bounty 2 launches well, you didn't show any of the gameplay, and I don't know anything about King's Bounty, so uh, can't really talk about how deep the gameplay is going to get if we don't know anything about it. <laughs> ultimate news approaches. The fighter included in Wave Six of the paid Super Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC will be Arms. Joining the battle from Arms. This fighter is a bit unusual thanks to those extendable arms, so we'll have to extend our development time too. Please stay tuned for just a bit longer. The next <laughs> fighter will be announced and released uh, this June. Interesting that they are, you know, revealing that it's from, but not which fighter it is. Don't miss this arms game trial. And it's interesting that they waited this long. Game trial of arms will be available exclusively to Nintendo Switch Online members. Why exclusively to? Superstars share one thing in common: extended <sighs> arms. So equip superpowered arms to create. A That's not how you should be doing a demo for a game that didn't do well. At time, you can try out the full game for free. Now, uh, let's get stretchy. It's like I, I want arms to succeed. It's a really interesting game. Feeling good? I'm not in, into so fighting games right. enough to do it. Then how about we take a nice Smash was like. Just casual enough for me to get into it in Ultimate, but where where am I? Can't believe I survived. We'll talk barbell arms in a bit. See what this is. Oh, Bravely Default 2. I forgot about that. I did forget about that. <laughs> Should have predicted that. Fire. Forgot that that was announced. Wind, Earth, Nature's Masters. The badly named, badly briefly default too. It's the hand of man. And if it's I leave, pretty. would bring down death, disaster, calamity, and blight upon the land. Heroes of Light, may the crystals guide you. This is the crystals' blessing. Don't swear to details, eh? And don't stand on <laughs> ceremony either. <laughs> <laughs> that voice. Then I've done the right thing. Yeah, Bravely Default 2, after already having a game called Bravely Second. That came after Bravely this tale Default. This on the continent of Excellent. 
Okay. Of five mighty kingdoms. The saga begins when our hero Seth, a young sailor, washes up on the shores of one such kingdom. Well, at least I'm alive. Here, he meets Gloria of Musa, a princess who was forced to flee her kingdom when it was destroyed by evil forces bent on stealing its crystals. You dare claim the crystals? You do not know their worth. He also encounters two travelers determined to decipher a mysterious and magical book, Elvis and Adele. <laughs> certain special book to be deciphered. Okay. We're not friends or anything. I'm just here because he hired me. <laughs> the the voices do not match the looks very well. And Elvis, really? With a sense of purpose. But there will be those who stand in their way. Those who have gotten hold of special items known as asterisks. These stones allow their holders to take on jobs, such as thief or black mage, becoming infinitely more powerful in the process. Okay, let's do this. I shall steal it all. Every last treasure in the empire. During battle, you must decide when to use Brave Points, or BP, the lifeblood of the game's turn-based system. The I mean, give me the same, same mechanic. The brave and default commands. Yeah. Choose Brave to spend BP in order to allow characters to perform additional actions. Choose Default to order a character to guard, reclaiming a BP in the process. Strategically hold back or take multiple actions in one turn. To make the right choice, you must consider your character's roles and statuses at all times. I will say if you manage to fell an asterisk holder. You, you get the job. Yeah. Asterisk, allowing you to uh, take on the associated job. Jobs the, the look of the game isn't that great. Which is concerning. The world looked nice. The world map looked nice. Now for a I mean, yeah, that looks beautiful. The world map looks beautiful. Battle map and menus were not looking very good. Demo available today is nice. We'll conduct a survey to gather feedback and incorporate what we can as we find And that's good. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the... Battle look. I mean, this, it doesn't. It doesn't work so well doing that exact style on Switch as it did on the 3DS because much higher graphical fidelity just doesn't fit quite as nicely. Might as well play the game though. Hey, Anafuda! <laughs> so we're getting a uh, kind of a killing question. Oh, Clubhouse games! Nice. Presenting a oh. single game included in this massive new collection of fun from around the globe. Yes, I love Clubhouse games. Mancala. That was like one of. Back yeah, Anafuda. Renegade, Checkers, President, Dominoes, Speed, Hare and Hounds, Blackjack. Never heard of that one. Four in a row. Chess. Okay, four basically. Mini Shogi, Ludo, Richie Mahjong, nice. Sevens, Golf, Darts, Texas Hold'em, <laughs> Nine Men's Morris, Air Hockey. And it's just gonna keep Air, going. Chinese and Chinese going. Yep. Dice, and going. Takoyaki, and Zillions, going. Hex, Spider Solitaire, Gomoku, Matching, Bowling, Shooting Gallery, Slot Cards, Shots and Boxes, <laughs> Hit and Blow. God, but they're really adding a lot more than last time. Last card, Fishing. Klondike Solitaire, Toy Tennis, Toy Soccer, Toy Curling, Toy Boxing, <laughs> Toy Baseball, Battle Toy Toy, Team Tanks, Sliding Puzzle, and Six Ball Puzzle. Phew, that really is 51 games. And there are many ways to play them. Some games are multiplayer, including options for up to four people. Playing nice. with wireless, and in some cases, online play is supported too. If you weren't aware, this was a Clubhouse Games. Um, I don't know how many times they've done it, but it was on... Was it DS or 3DS? I think it's a DS. Um, it was one of my favorite DS games. 
<laughs> just because of the sheer variety of games they had. It was also the only way I could ever play Hanafuda. Because <laughs> I don't have anyone to play it with. Oh, so you're the ultimate ninja, are you? Well then, prove it in battle. As one of eight players, you must earn the most points to claim victory. Sprint across um, stages. Okay. <laughs> and show off your gum ninjutsu like only you can. By chewing ninja gum, you can dash at high speeds. <laughs> disguise yourself. And wield an arsenal of skills. And speaking of arsenals, from heavy hitting I hammers, don't know what to say about this one. To tactical tricked out yo yo's. It's like on the one hand, looks really interesting, on the other hand, what the hell? <laughs> Ninjas thrive in clans, so cement your supremacy in four-on-four -four team battles that prove I'm definitely not the when they work interest together. me interesting sort of thing, disaster, but just interesting in general, but at the same time, when huh? Up on Nintendo Switch, May 27th. And hey, okay. it's free to play too. Because it makes it easy to try it out. On Nintendo Switch. Enter Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy to learn the ways of the Force. Customize your look, play a role in this Star Wars story, and battle online. With I don't know which games this players. is. So, <laughs> oh, there's been so many Star Wars games. Jedi Academy launched okay. On Nintendo Switch that today. one. <laughs> I don't know enough about them. In because Star hey! Wars one racer is coming soon. Nice. In this remade dragon riding class, there's you'll pilot the blue dragon dragon, yep. incredible landscapes. Battling giant kind of expected that. Lethal battleships, using 360 degree controls and lock on targeting. It's your yeah, the pod racing game is nice because honestly, the best thing about the pre prequels, pod racing, such a good idea. Today, <laughs> there's a lot more coming to Nintendo Switch. Trials Mana, of course. I don't know if we already knew the date or not, actually. That is one thing I did forget about. No idea what that is. It looks like some sort of DJ game. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Ooh, a mobile game. <laughs> Warhammer 40,000. Huh. Don't know enough about whether or not it's a good or bad Warhammer game, but eh. if it is good. Good for the Warhammer fans. Burnout Paradise Remastered. Ooh, nice. One of the best racing games ever, so. Or Saints Row 4. Um, okay. Depends on how well it runs. Haven't heard of that before. Just a RPG, it looks like. Mr. Driller Drillin. Cute. <laughs> kind of a Dig Dug game. Minecraft Dungeons. Still just spring. No real specific dates. Let's we'll see how well, it's been ends of going. But today's Nintendo Direct Mini isn't over yet. How good this it actually is. Last news of the day. So what you got? What's your one more thing? Now, Pokemon. Information on the Pokemon Sword expansion <laughs> so we are getting more Pokemon news. More visuals, at least. Looks a little better. Oh, are we literally just... I suppose it might be Isle of Man. But it could also be Isle of Man. It's kind of hard to tell, just from without going back and looking. Today we have some follow-up information about Part 1, The Isle of Armor. On the Isle of Armor lies a dojo for Pokemon battles. We knew that part already. To master their skills. Mustard. And if you train at this dojo, you will receive the legendary Pokemon... Kubfu from the Master, Mustard. Through your training with Kubfu, you will receive permission to challenge the Towers of Two Fists on the Isle of Armor. In this challenge, you will enter one of two towers, the Tower of Darkness or the Tower of Waters. Depending on the version. One, oh, no, you, you get to choose. Kubfu okay. Face this challenge alone. Once you've conquered one of the towers, Kubfu will evolve into Urshifu. If you choose the Tower of Darkness, 
It will learn single strike. Yeah, get the dark type. But if you choose the tower of waters, get the water type. <laughs> dark or water. The choice is yours and yours alone. Beyond that, the evolved form of your partner Pokémon, and yet G-Max moves. Hellion, will gain a Gigantamax form as a reward for your adventure on the island. Of course, he's Dobby Fox's music. <laughs> Let's take a look at each Pokémon's Gigantamax form moves. Beating a giant drum and controlling its roots, it's G-Max Drum Solo. Kicking a giant ball of fire to deliver a powerful shot, it's G-Max Fireball. And blasting the opponent with water from 130 feet up, it's G-Max Hydro Snipe. What do they do? Than Dynamax moves, and when used, the opponent's abilities have no effect when they are attacking. Oh. Well, that's be really, really good for. Outfit items and hairstyles. Yeah, it could look like Marty. There will also be new league card backgrounds. I think we already knew that. Actually. Now you'll have even more customization that I like. To show off your personality. Your league cards. Pokemon Sword A little bit more unique. Um. Yeah, ignoring abilities will be useful for against certain Pokemon, but not that many. It's mainly like Mimikyu would be the best one in sturdy. We've prepared this early purchase bonus well, and immunity abilities. Starting today, during max raid battles in the wild area, you'll have a higher chance of encountering the Gigantamax forms of Caparaja and Duraludon in Pokemon Sword, and Garbodor and Charizard in Pokemon Shield. All right. Battle with other trainers to take on this challenge together. Won't say no to Duraludons. <laughs> That's all for today's Nintendo Direct Mini. Thanks for watching. The last little scenes play out. So, definitely kind of a mixed bag. Um, some things I am for. <laughs> um, obviously, a lot of ports, which I mean to be expected from like particularly from third parties. Um, and updates, obviously, the Zelda Chronicles is an update. Uh, or remaster, technically. So, let's go ahead and just mute this here. Let's go back and look through some things. First off, the Xenoblade Chronicles looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it, it, you might think, oh, it's not that big of an improvement on the Wii. It is. This is so much so much better um so much cleaner crisper especially i mean the characters especially um so much crisper and cleaner um they're even talking about um like the ui too where is that here i mean i can see a little bit of it here with the the battle ui a lot less fuzzy <laughs> I mean, that's like like the, the biggest thing Zimbabwe Chronicles 1 was like fuzziness incarnate <laughs> in terms of its graphics. It's like fuzziness, fuzziness everywhere. Um, still looked great, but was it very crisp? Uh, this is so much better and so much cleaner. Um, also changing up the menus. It looks like just be a little bit more efficient. I don't remember enough about the menus to go into like detail on UI changes. Um... It's, it's just been too long since I played Zimbabwe Chronicles 1, and I've only been able to play it on the 3DS. So, you know, especially even a bigger change from the 3DS to this. Um, but even you you go back and look at the Wii version. Um, say you you go and look at, say, Chugga Conrad's playthrough of it, which is how I originally got introduced to Zingle Blade. Um, it's, it's so much better looking. Uh, and then getting post game to this future connected um after the end of the game i'm not going to go into to details on circumstances that this is taking place in in case you haven't played xenoblade or haven't watched xenoblade um and want to experience it yourself won't spoil anything um uh, but it would definitely be interesting to see you know things after the end of that game because um be a very big change. Also some question marks over one particular character and how that will affect that. We'll, we'll find out. Um 
And obviously they can potential to tie Xenoblade 1 into Xenoblade 2, just like Xenoblade 2 got tied into Xenoblade 1 um, in Xenoblade 2. So, um, well, Chronicles 2, technically. Um, so that's, that would be a possibility, and well, I would expect probably would happen. Um, and then art book, yeah. Uh, Zimmer Chronicles Definitive Works Premium Hardbound Art Book with Slipcase. Oh, wow, it even gets its own slipcase. Fancy. Um, obviously, these are things announced for it. It's just the book and the game. Um, I hope that they had a sound selection CD. That would be nice. I mean, this is Zimmer Chronicles, after all. <laughs> Known for its gorgeous visuals and amazing music. And great story, too. But the story part, you, you get through the game. Um... So that'd be nice, but still, just look at look at the Mechanis there. Ugh, that looks so much better. Obviously, that's on you know the art book, but heck, even if we go back to like the beginning, um, just just look at that. Ah, so good, so good. I'm looking forward to that so much. May 29th, still a ways away. Um, two months away. Uh. But still, really, really nice. Then we had the 2K game. I mean, this is 2K. I don't really know. I suppose 2K does own. What the hell's the name of the company I'm thinking of? The Gear. <laughs> Maybe I should just look at the box art. Uh, let's see here. I guess I could come to. Download and micro SD card required. Ugh. Ugh. So it's Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and the pre sequel. Please make it so that Borderlands, Borderlands 2 is on the cartridge, and the pre sequel is the thing that's required to download. <laughs> uh. um. Do they not? Okay, so looking at this, includes game cartridge for Borderlands, Game of the Year edition, and download code for the other two. Ugh. Seriously? That's just dumb. That is so dumb. Nope, oh, not getting it now. Okay. <laughs> I'm limited micro SD card space. I'm not doing that. But Gearbox, that's what I was thinking of. The company that actually made Borderlands. Uh... Yeah, I forgot that 2K on them. Bioshock also says download a micro SD card is required. It doesn't say for what. I would pres I would hope that the original Bioshock is on the cartridge. And then I guess the the newer one would be was it Infinity? I think it's called. Um, would be the one that's that download, but that's still. Anytime I see that, even XCOM two. Really. Really, 2K. Jesus Christ. Just dish out the money for the better game cartridge. Oh, we'll spend slightly more, even if it's an old game, to get it portable. Just, you know, especially when, like, the collections are two, three games. Just... <sighs> downloads, re required downloads for physical games are terrible. And they're an instant way to turn people off. Don't really have much to say about these two games. Uh, I don't cross saying. Uh, obviously, Easter. Uh, yeah, it's much before to give Easter update. Uh, very, very, very cute. <laughs> Bunny and all the little pretty little eggs. I want to see what these items are. So you got an Easter egg arch. You got Easter eggs um, of various sizes. Easter egg balloons, a sideways Easter egg, a basket of Easter eggs, an Easter egg table, uh, Easter egg chairs, a cute little Easter egg dress, boots, and little <laughs> Easter egg, um, oh, what do you call those things? Not Reese, because Reese you hang. Oh, I forget what the head version is called. Eh. Maybe I'll think of it later. <laughs> but yay. And then 
that's the Earth Day update later in April. And then this game. Um, Full Moon Finance Legal Accounting Taxes Auditorium. This looks really cute and interesting and just fun. <laughs> um, and this was sort of cute, like a little stick figure. Uh, sort of game. Using it as like, um, what, what are those things called? Like the old like safety sort of thing like workplace safety stuff posters and videos and stuff that you use you know, these sorts of little figures um and you can be really safe and good or you can just destroy half the building <laughs> to complete your job <laughs> and see how much damage you can cause <laughs> That looks like it is a really interesting fun game made by Nintendo. Really? Um, I don't know why I thought. What what was the name that I said? I was it's Catherine. I said another C name. <laughs> I don't remember what C name I said now. Uh, I don't know why I thought it was the other one. Uh, it's never been a game that interested me ever. It's just not my style. Now this is nice, given that everyone's stuck inside. Um, now obviously. Most places, even like the shelter in place orders, you can still go outside um, for those essential things and to, uh, you know, take a walk, especially if you have a pet um, that needs to you know, go outside to say poop or something. <laughs> um, but you know, you can you can still go outside and have, go out for a walk and everything. Just you know, gotta keep your distance. Um, but having you know, an update for a game about exercising at home at a time where we're all stuck at home <laughs> is a really good idea. Uh, and the update is available now, it looks like. Is this just a free update too? Hold on, let's turn the sound back on for this. Double check. A free update for the Ring Fit. Yep, it's just all, it's all free update. Uh, so yeah, that, that's good. I really like that they're doing that, especially at this time. That was a really good idea. And especially since it did decently well um, as, a, as a game in the periphery. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really damn good exercise game. Uh, probably the best exercise game they ever made, honestly. Uh, a lot better than the Wii's, you know, stupid bounce board stuff. Uh, this game did not see enough gameplay for me to be able to say anything about. Um... I've never heard of it. <laughs> Maybe I'll look into it, but yeah, you kind of need more gameplay. And then the the smash announcement. Now, this is not something that I expected in two ways. Number one, I wouldn't have expected them to announce it, but not in actually, you know, probably show the characters like, hey, it's going to be a character from ARMS, but we're not going to show anything off. It's like, okay, well, nice to know that the, you know, it, it's just kind of delayed because it's taking longer than you thought. Um, you know, just give an update in that regard. But at the same time, arms. Why didn't you do this a year ago? <laughs> why wasn't this the first DLC pack? Oh, why wasn't this part of the base game? Is you want to do something, presumably, to help push arms? and get people more interested in it. But the problem with ARMS is it is actually, you know, from everything I've played in the demo, a good game. There's not enough to it. It's niche. It didn't draw enough people. Uh, despite it being really interesting, in part, because there wasn't enough to it. And it's also... How do I describe the issues with arms? Um, not only enough modes, not good enough single player um, from everything I've seen. But the style of game that it is, it's just not the sort of thing that keeps you coming back. Uh, I guess is the best way I can describe it. And arms, it was a really interesting new IP. 
you know, these are the sorts of challenges, you know, uh, not challenges, um, risks that Nintendo needs to take, just like they did with Splatoon, they did it with ARMS. It worked with Splatoon, it did not work with ARMS. You know, that's the sort of risk you take with new IPs. Um, why now? Especially, like, Spring Man is already an assist trophy, so presumably that's not going to be who the fighter is. I mean, they could. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 you can never say never. Um, I would guess probably Ribbon Girl, Twin Tail, uh, or... F- what's her name? The Ramen Girl. Um, I suspect, like, one of those three most likely would be the actual fighter. But... It's so late. They needed to do this so long ago. If they wanted to do this to try and push arms, it'd be more interesting. Um, and then this arms trial. Why is it exclusive to Nintendo Switch Online players? Why? 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 I mean, it is for decently decent length of time, and you get to try the full game for that time period. But why? It's why just the subscribers? You're not going to bring people to the subscription to play a demo. Like, if you're going to do this exclusive to subscribers, then also announce new stuff for the subscription, like more SNES games, like I mentioned before, that would get people to buy the subscription and then try out the game. Or better yet, just don't make it exclusive to the subscribers. Make it available to everybody. Uh, it's like I kind of sort of get it in the sense that okay, it's using the servers, so you have to be a member to play the demo. But at the same time, that's so dumb when you're trying to bring players to a game that didn't do that well. It was really interesting, but just didn't do well in part because of faults of its own. It does have faults, um, and it's just. I just have to ask why. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess, I guess that's the, the point of it. It's just, it's just why. And Bravely Default 2. Um, first off, terrible name. God awful name. <laughs> Should have just been Bravely 3rd. <laughs> um, or if you want to go back to Bravely Default, Bravely Default 3. <laughs> and just say that Bravely 2nd was the official Bravely Default 2. Right? But now you have Bravely 2nd and Bravely Default 2. Way to Nintendo in terms of the naming schemes. <laughs> Even though it's Square Enix, not Nintendo. Um, the world map here. Gorgeous. Awesome. Perfect. No complaints. Whatsoever. Voice acting was... Um, <clears throat> not very good. Um, the voices... Particularly... Was it Gloria or Adele? Uh, I forget which name was which. And then, okay, so that's Gloria. So Adele and why did you name Melvis? And what universe is that in Elvis? <laughs> um, it's like you you gotta re- you, you gotta understand that the first thing people are going to think of when they see the name Elvis is lo and behold. Freaking Elvis, and you have this Felton special book to be deciphering. Really bad accent. I mean, I'm not going to say that there isn't someone who is actually speaks that accent, but it doesn't sound like someone who speaks that accent. Um, also, what accent even is that? It's like. Is that supposed to be Irish or Scottish? Because can't even really tell. I know the other girl was clearly Scottish. We're not friends or anything. Or at least I think that's I Scottish. Because he hired me. Regardless, they don't sound real. Even if they are real, which I cannot say because I don't know who the voice actors are. They don't sound real. They sound fake. <laughs> which is a sign of not great voice acting. They don't sound natural. Um, As if guided by fate. 
determined to decipher a mysterious Let's go back through this again. book. Elvis and Adele. I've a certain special book to be deciphered. He's far, far worse. He's you blatantly does not sound real. She sounds anything. I'm just here because he hired me. At least okay. She sounds okay. It doesn't quite seem to sound right, but it's close enough that I could live with it. Elvis just sounds bad. It sounds like such a bad accent. It does not sound good. Um, now, the character models and designs look okay um, on their own. I, I like these uh, sort of drawn styles a little bit more. Uh, but the, the little 3D models, they look okay on their own. They look okay in the world. Um, look okay here. But... Let's get this back again. Dang it. <laughs> Went past where I was wanting to stop there. There. That does not look great. <laughs> um, the UI looks kind of amateurish, honestly. Um, that font is so basic. Ugh. You can pick a better font. It's like, th that really doesn't look that great. Um, the style of it doesn't look great. The battlefield here just looks... Ugh. <laughs> and clashes really heavily with the models. Um, the attack animations... Once we get to them here. Yeah, 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 brave points, brave points, get on with it. I'm gonna do a little skip here. Okay. So she sets up her braves. Obviously these are sped up animations, but the animations I mean they're fluid, but they don't look very impressive. Well animated, but basically well animated animations, but not particularly good or interesting animations. They didn't have, don't have a lot of life to them, I suppose is the way to kind of explain it. This looks horrible. <laughs> like, what is this menu? Okay, first off, the menu being tilted is just tilting me <laughs> on the right there. That looks bad. I hate that. Don't do that. Get it back to square. <laughs> Don't tilt your damn menu. You're not Persona 5, okay? You're not Persona in general. You can't do that with a simple, basic-looking menu like this. Also, this is not... Like, again, the font is not very good. Um, the style of it looks... It looks muddy because it is muddy, this background and everything. Like, I was talking earlier about how Xenoblade menus look so much crisper and cleaner. This looks like what Xenoblade menus used to be only slightly worse. Although that might just be me not remembering how kind of fuzzy everything looked in Xenoblade Chronicles 1. But, you know, this looks like the menus that Xenoblade Chronicles vastly improved on um, and made look a lot better. This does not look good, especially up here in the top left. The, the model... First off, the background on the model clashes so badly and doesn't look good. It looks bad. It just outright looks bad. And the model is fuzzy. You got weird. Uh, I don't. What is it? Just aliasing problems, I guess, around the edges that makes makes it look choppy and well fuzzy. <laughs> um. Uh, there's just so many problems. The, sh the the shine on the armor just looks bad. It it just doesn't look good. The UI is just, ugh. And uh, you know, even that. If I go back, just slightly go back frame by frame here. Like that you know, uh, that outfit also, it just looks muddy. It's like I can't even. You know, there's tons of detail that I can't make out. Clearly, because it's too muddy. It's not clear enough. 
Because you know, that that is an animation with life. That is a good animation. Because um, again, as I said before, those animations were well animated, but they didn't have life. They didn't have, you know, enough emphasis to them to make them stand out. And back to the world, which looks amazing, and no complaints, because it just looks freaking amazing. Um, and here are the models of the characters look great. Why it looks so, and they and again they look do look good in the battles. Um, they clash with that one battle scene. This battle scene looks much, 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 much better. This battle scene is good. Um, still the UI is awful. Why the characters look so bad in the menu is beyond me when they look pretty good here. The shine on that armor is still not very good though. Um, the enemies look okay ish. All right, I'm still noticing some aliasing problems on them. Um, a little bit, and the the fish ones in the back don't stand out particularly well, and even the plant doesn't stand out particularly well because the color of the like the little bubbles on them blends in with the background. So this it just doesn't quite stand out well enough, but it's okay at the very least. Now here you get you know much better models, kind of kind of twig like. In a way, just all right. I mean, the, the wood pine looks kind of toy-like as well, um, but only you know very, very slightly. So it's not you know, as extreme as say uh, Link's Awakening was on the toy-ish uh, look. Uh, but you know, here this looks fine, minus the you know, UI again. <laughs> I'm just going to keep complaining about that dumb UI. And, but again, these you know animations are so boring. That one again. Now there's another good one, but it's only these you know special attacks that have these you know actual interesting animations. Because like if you look at say, um, Octopath Traveler, right? Uh, like there, a lot of the you know, character animations because their sprites aren't that complicated for like your basic stuff, right? Um, and even some of the more complex stuff, but each attack is given life through the special effects. The sprites can only do, you know, only do so much, but the special effects of every spell, and also the glow of using up your, you know, extra turns, which I forget what they're called, in Octopath Traveler, off the top of my head. Um, you know, it's so, so bright, you know, it gives like, this bright flash that fills the screen with light, and they're just surrounded by, you know, this great glow, whereas if we go back here to win, they're braving. Okay, so, you to use up the brave, watch this. Ooh, wow, little little bit of red glow, and then she has a little glowing circle under her. Ooh, wow, a little red glow, and then she still has a glowing circle on her that's the same color. Ooh, wow, the same red glow and the same glowing circle under her. What the hell? <laughs> In Octopath Traveler, each time you use the extra turn, not only did you have that bright, big flash of light that filled the screen for, you know, a split second, and then you have this massive glow around them, the glow color changed the more turns that you were doing in that turn which allowed you you know gave you like another way to know how many turns you're using up on top of just what the ui says uh, and that was good design <laughs> that's very good design so it's bright and flashy and then obviously you know the attacks were bright and flashy in their effects the again, sprites didn't do that much because they're sprites but the attacks and them connecting with the enemies were very bright, very flashy, um, had, you know, unique animations, were very visually pleasing and interesting. Look at how these can attacks do. Boo, boom, 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 oof. It's like, that is so dull. And I'm ripping and tearing into this because I like Bravely to Fall. But when you're coming up to the Switch from the 3DS, you've got to do more. You have way more graphical fidelity. 
way higher resolution. You, you need effects that are better than this. <laughs> way better than this. Look at your own company's game. Look at Brave Dead Full. It's made by you guys. Might have been a different team. Still be big, you guys. Look at what they did. Also, fix this god awful UI and that stupid boring font. <laughs> like, seriously, that font just looks like, you know, default font number 52. <laughs> And I'll be a little bit more interested. I'm still probably going to get in anyways, but <laughs> well, right now I'm I don't have the highest hopes. And also trying to get through that game with those cringy voices is going to be a pain. <laughs> now this, this, ah, oh, Clubhouse games. This is something I could have never predicted. It has been so long since the Clubhouse games, because I'm pretty sure they never released one on 3DS, that I'm aware of. If they did, I missed it. Um, it was it, it legitimate. I'm, I'm being serious when I'm saying it was my, one of my favorite DS games. It's one of my most played, too, outside of Pokemon games. Um, basically, yeah, Pokemon, Clubhouse games. Those were the DS games I played the most, you know, along with, like, Brain Age and... Um, I'm trying to think of the names. Drawn to Life. Fantasy Life was 3DS, so that doesn't count. Yeah, those are like the, the, the those are like the main big ones I, I can think of off the top of my head that I played a ton. Club Best Games was so fun. Um, it had good AI, good variety of AI from using hard. Uh, it had a bunch of games that were a lot of fun. Some games you don't see a lot of, like Hanafuda, although they pronounced it slightly differently here. Um, I want to actually see. How do they pronounce it? It was also the second one. They had. I like that it was the second one. Um, was obviously, I saw the card as they were you know flipping through the little thing to begin with, but how do you pronounce it? Because I'm guessing this is the official pronunciation. I've always just pronounced it Hanafuda because that's how I assumed it was pronounced. Um... Hanafuda. Hanafuda. Okay. Good to know. Hanafuda. <laughs> Assuming that this is the correct pronunciation, given this is a Japanese company that makes Hanafuda cards <laughs> and got their start making Hanafuda cards, I would presume that they would tell their English translation team how to pronounce it correctly, so I'm going to trust them that that is the correct pronunciation. Hanafuda is a really fun game. Uh, it's one I actually have a set of cards for. The little Mario ones from the um, Nintendo Club. Uh, but I don't get to play it ever because I don't have anyone to play with. And granted, I don't have anyone to play many games with. But um, it's also a difficult game to learn and to teach people. Um, so I played it a ton. It was probably the most played game in the original Clubhouse games, because it was so different, so unique. I loved the the look of the cards, um, and it was really interesting. Um, so, you need to play it again, this time on Switch. That alone, like, if this was Switch's Clubhouse games, Hanafuda, the game, and that was it. Get on the eShop for, like, five bucks. I would play that. I would buy it just for that. Because <laughs> um, it gives me a way to play it and yeah, play, play it online with other people. But, good God. <laughs> the number of games that they packed in this. The original had. Well, God, how many games did it have? Like around. I'd say around like 30 to 40, somewhere around there. A decent number. Uh, let's go through and game by game. And if I recognize it from the, or, well, I don't know if that's actually is the original or not, um, but it actually might be the original because I don't recall that being a thing before then. And I think it was literally just called Clubhouse Games. In fact, hold on a second.
and reveal to you that yes, indeed, it was literally just called Clubhouse Games, so that is presumably the first. And since I have not heard of there being another one since then, uh, this could very well just be the second, and the only other one. Um, because I don't, again, I don't remember it ever being on the 3DS. <laughs> Um, so, I am a happy camper. Now, let's go through here. Worldwide Classics. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it basically is, you know, given what they they were showing there. A, a lot of variety. I will say the, the way that they ordered some of the stuff didn't make a lot of sense. Like, they had solitaires, like, broken up. Um... Presenting every single game included in this massive new collection of fun from around the globe. Let's go one by one. Manicala was not in the original. That is new. Greatly appreciated. It's a great game. That was in the original. Already gushed about it. Pretty sure Backgammon was. Uh, A.K.A. Othello. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Checkers. Yes. President. I think it might have been. There were several card games. Um, I think President was one of those. Dominoes. Honestly, cannot remember. Half my brain says yes, half my brain says no. Don't know. Speed. No. Heron Hounds. On the one hand... I've never heard on this game, heard of this game before. On the other hand, I have heard of this game before. <laughs> I just don't remember anything about how it's played, but it looks familiar. I don't think it was in Clubhouse Games. Though it might have been. <laughs> That's how unsure of this game I am. <laughs> but also, very appropriate game to be in uh, a new version of one of my favorite DS games when... Uh, my first comic, Silver Hair. Literally, the first volume is called The Hound in the Hair. <laughs> so, hey! A uh, game I'm bound to enjoy. <laughs> Just on name alone. <laughs> and uh, also, you know, sort of remembering what it is. I think the goal of the game is... I think the hair has to get from, like, one side to the other. While the hounds have to trap the hare, but the hare can move multiple tiles at a time, while the hounds can only move one per turn. I think um, if my vaguest memories of this are correct, and also just you know, looking at the game and what it is. <laughs> blackjack. Pretty sure Blackjack was in the original. Four in a row. Um... Might have been? Actually, it might not have been. I don't think it was. So I think that's new to this version. Yeah, so they also got it four, two four rows in there. Um, chess was. Shogi was. Don't think Mini Shogi was. I think it was just regular Shogi. Was not. No, I, I would remember if this was there or not. I do not think Mahjong was in the original. If it was, it was just, you know, matching Mahjong, which I think they showed a little bit later. I don't know what it's called. Uh, this, absolutely not. Seven. Is this... Oh, this is where you're trying to get them all on the board? I don't... Like, the layout is familiar to me, but it's also not this version of this sort of layout of what you're trying to do is not... I don't know anything about sevens. It was not in the original Golf. points. Don't go too fast. Golf is new. I'm pretty sure. don't think there's any form of golf game in the original. Dart. Darts was in the original. Texas Hold not sure about Texas Hold'em. You would think so. But there's only a few card games in the original. I'm not sure if Texas Hold'em was one of them. Might have been, though. Nine men's... Morris. That was not. I never heard of that. Air hockey. Pretty sure that was. War. Uh, no. Air. Hold on. Don't going too fast. <laughs> Karam 
Never heard of. So no. Chinese checkers was. So, <laughs> yacht dice. <laughs> Yahtzee. Basically. No, that's new. At least I'm pretty sure it is. Takoyaki? That's a game? <laughs> Didn't know that was the name of a game, too. Um, yeah, it was not. Might have been. I'm not sure. Nope. Spider Solitaire. Oh, God. It, it, it changes visuals before he's even finished saying it. Um, I don't think Spider Solitaire was, though, again, maybe it's remembering. It's hard to remember the card games specifically because there weren't that many of them, and there are so many card games out there. It's hard to remember which ones they had. Gomoku. Okay, so that's basically five in a row. Um, that was in there. That was another game that I played the hell out of. Matching. Matching was not. Oh, that's a you know, pretty basic game. Bowling. Don't think so. That's a decent looking bowling game, too. Definitely not. And that's just a little mini mini game, anyways. Um, but I mean, the original had a few of those as well. Uh, that's new. I actually think that was in the original. Hit and blow. Um, God, what is this game called normally? I mean, I have it. Mastermind. Mastermind, that's what it is. Um, yeah, no, that's... I'm, I'm pretty sure that's new. I don't think Mastermind was in the original. Pig's tail. Definitely new. Mahjong Solitaire, okay. Um, that might have been in the original. I don't remember. I don't think it was at the same time, but it might have been. Last card, so Uno, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, that wasn't. That's new. Klondike Solitaire, I think, was in there. That's new. Toy Soccer might have been. Um, I think Curling was as well. I'm not 100% sure. Although Toy Curling, um, I think it would be new. Toy Curling, Toy Box. Toy boxing is new. I think toy baseball is new as well. A little bit more... Uh, a little bit better version than what was in... Actually, I say a little bit better. A lot better version than what was in... Um, whatchamacallit? Mario Party. It looks like it looks like, an, like a proper... How a proper toy uh, baseball game would work. Uh, that's new. Yeah, obviously these tank ones are new. <laughs> kind of taken straight out of Mario Party here. Again. That's new, obviously. Also new. That really is 51 games. And there are many ways to play them. That's a lot of freaking games. <laughs> and, like, a lot of us might say, like, oh, mini games. Some of these are, like, proper games. Mastermind is a proper game. Um, Yahtzee is a proper game. Mahjong. Uh, how did you say it again? I'm already forgetting. I'm together. How'd you say it? Presenting every how'd you say it? Mancala. Hanafuda. Hanafuda. There we go. <laughs> Hanafuda. Mancala, obviously, as well. Um... Uh, that that one that sorry you're not sorry. Well, I guess technically sorry is kind of based off of it too. But sorry, in trouble. Both based off of what was the name? Because I can never remember what the original name is. Was it sixteen or four sevens? Come on, <laughs> trying to do frame by frame here because five seconds is too much with how fast this thing is going. Ludo! There we go. <laughs> I don't know why I can never remember the name of Ludo. <laughs> um, but I mean, heck, that could be quite a long game, too. Um, you know, these, you know, some of these are more mini game styles, but yeah, I mean, like Texas Hold'em, like any of the poker games, honestly. Jeez. <laughs> Shogi, chess. Those can take quite some time, too. You can proper game. Full proper games. Like, there's a lot of stuff in here. I will say, does not have anywhere near as good of a UI 
<laughs> as the original. The CY is not particularly interesting. Um, granted, this is the on play, uh, online play at UI, so. Including options for up to four people, playing via local wireless, and in some cases, online play is supported too. Choose three games, match. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen. Uh, well, basically, well, basically nine times five minus one, so forty-four of them are available for on multiplayer. Uh, which, which makes sense, you know, the, the solitary games wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this isn't the best UI in the world, but it's okay. Uh, it's just to select three games. I'm hoping that the main, like, single player aspect of it has, you know, it doesn't have to be the same UI as what the original had, but, you know, a, you know, a nicer UI that, you know, groups them by, you know, type of game, you know, card games, um, like chess checker games, um, I was gonna say, like, Go games, but there's only two of those, but you can, you know, Put that together with like Connect Four and Othello, um, stuff like that. Board games, um, the things of that nature. You, there's good ways to kind of group them together, which is what the original did. Um, and the original also actually had an unlock system and achievements. Uh, achievements up to you know, uh, you know, you, you had to do like certain things to unlock games, and you had achievements to try and you know, challenge you to you uh do well in the games and i'd like to see that come back and just play play to your heart's content against rivals the world over when clubhouse games 51 worldwide and yeah. against rivals the world over yeah you can see here yeah gold the the hair is to get to the other side when clubhouse games 51 worldwide classics launches i think if i remember right the way it works the hair can move twice and the hounds can move once but you can only look like one hand every turn. Um, something like that. On Nintendo Switch, June 5th. June 5th. So right around when E3 will be happening just beforehand. A couple months away. Looking forward to it. I love Clubhouse Pre games so much. This, again, I just don't really don't know what to think about. Um, interesting, but I just, I just don't know what to say. Um, Star Wars, Star Wars port, good for those that like that game. Cross Mana coming out soon, F completely forgot about it. Um, not one I'm personally going to play, but I'm happy that, that, uh, obviously the third one, uh, did already come out in its original form, but you're getting this nice uh, sort of remake as well, for those that have been waiting so long for that. Some sort of DJ game, don't really care. Um, what was this again? Oh, right. Elvis World Blades. <laughs> it's a goddamn bad mobile game. Don't care. Saints Row 4, just hope that the performance is okay. <laughs> Though that's still going to be kind of challenging. Um, some sort of RPG. I mean, there's 20 billion RPGs, unless there's you know, enough information for me to, to get me interested in, on it. I'm not going to be interested in it, because just being an RPG isn't enough to get me interested. It has to have something there that you're advertising that draws me in. And it's just a short blurb, so <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's an RPG! <laughs> um... Mr. Driller Drillland, Bandai Namco. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Dig Dug, but it's obviously it's a slash like Mother Load, um, but obviously you know very different. It's cute. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons. We just honestly at this point need to play it um, to see what it's gonna be like. A lot of visual effects. <laughs> and then Pokemon. Okay. So let's let's take a little bit more closer look at this as our final thing. Since I am a big Pokemon. 
First off, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I have been recording. Um, I mean, I recorded a fair bit when it initially came out. I got up to, you know, through the third gym and up to the next city. That I'm forgetting the name of, off the top of my head. Um, and that's where I stopped. Because uh, then I was having to work too much. Um, just couldn't get around to it, then we moved. And since I've been here, I've been just dealing with other stuff. I haven't gotten back to it yet. Um, something I could be editing up uh, soon. And I'll go into more detail on that for uh, CPP update video when I do that soon <laughs> as well. Uh, I'm doing this first because it's happening first before I got the chance to get to the CPP update video. Sword and Shield, I haven't even finished it yet. And it is such a mixed bag. Um, on the one hand, it does so many things so much better than previous games. At the other times, it doesn't do enough better than previous games, particularly in the graphics department. It looks a lot better in the graphics department, while also not being good enough, considering it's on the Switch. Um, and in terms of the rest of the game, it's like it's two steps forward, two steps back with everything. Um, in some cases, one step forward, five steps back. In other cases, five steps forward, one step back. Like It's all over the goddamn map. It is... There's so many things where it does so much better than other games, and other things where it's just like, why? <laughs> like, why did you do this? Um, and I would go in more in depth into my thoughts on it you know, in the videos I've already done, uh, recorded months ago at this point, uh, as well as in future videos of... Um, me playing through sword. Um, but these expansion passes are going to be really important. These are replacing the third version. Now, some people are praising it. Yay, it's replacing the third version. A little problem with doing that. One, A, it's still the same price <laughs> if you're trying to get it for both games. Um, though it is admittedly cheaper if you're getting one. But the thing about enhanced to versions is that they fixed the problems with the main game. Platinum greatly improved issues with Diamond and Pearl. Emerald greatly improved issues that Ruby and Sapphire had. Um, Black 2 and White 2 were sequels, so they were a little bit different. But again, they still improved a number of things from Black and White. Crystal was the same thing for Gold and Silver. And the remakes took things from those enhanced versions. Uh, Fire Red, Leaf Green didn't really take much from Yellow. There wasn't really much there. Heart Gold Soul Silver took not only a bunch from Yellow, um, it took a lot from Crystal as well. It took a lot from Crystal and Heart Gold Soul Silver and made it a much better game even in the main game. Um, and Crystal obviously made you know, a much better game in the main game than gold and silver. And uh, Oris didn't take as much from Emerald as it should have, which is one of Emerald's, uh, Oris's problems, along with Hoenn, just being Hoenn and that being a problem in and of itself. Um, but those enhanced versions, the fact that they can fix the main game and fix issues with it, are part of what makes them the definitive versions. Um, on top of you know, just additions and stuff. Um, use some it's a bit different having you know, change up the, it changed the story slightly for the worse. There were some story things that it improved on, but there was a number of things, particularly when it comes to Lily, uh, that it made worse. Like it improved how, but made Lily worse. It's like, gee, thanks. <laughs> you made the more interesting character have less character growth um, and lose the means uh, motivations make may less sense just to make how a little bit better. Yay. <laughs> um, but everything else that they did with it, uh, you some was a great improvement. It's just one little flop, one little step back amongst a bunch of steps forward. Um, the reason why X and Y kind of suffer so much, even still now, it's because it never got a Z. It never got that improvement. Because not only did X and Y you know, 
one hundred percent need, need more post game. The post game was non existent in X and Y. I was like its biggest problem alongside the story. But you know, enhanced version has a chance, gives you a chance to fix some of those little issues with the story. Granted, there's a lot of issues with the story of X and Y, but um you, you can improve it, right? And there's other little improvements you can do. Thankfully, like the region and um the pacing were generally pretty good. The only major issue was the fact that the second gym was one city too late. It should have been in the city with the fossil um, place. Restoration Center. There we go. <laughs> fossil Restoration Center should have been in that city. Uh, it's still you know, a good ways away from the first gym, but it's... That, that that little difference makes a big difference because once you get to that fossil city, now you have to go all the way over to that cave to meet Team Flair and get introduced to them, and then come back to the fossil city and then go up the shore and then get to Celia City or Kylie City or however the hell you pronounce that city name, and then you fight Grant. <laughs> it's like that little bit of extra nonsense just makes it that little bit extra too long. Uh, frankly, you should have been either you know you get. To you put to that fossil research uh, center city, his name I just can't remember, um, on the cliff, and you fight the gym, and then you hear about oh there's trouble in the cave, go help the gym leader to do that, or else the gym leader is off you know dealing with trouble in that cave, and you have to go find him. Personally, that is even still just a little bit too much BS before you fight Grant. I prefer to fight Grant first, then oh no they come up to Grant, and there's trouble brewing over in that cave. Some weird people in, you know, red clothing and awful looking glasses, <laughs> weird outfits, uh, trying to steal fossils from our fossil researchers. Hey, Grant, can you come help us? Sure. Hey, Challenger, who just beat me, would you also like to come help me? Yes, I would. There you go. <laughs> Fixed it for you. Um, but, you know, enhanced version. Could fix those things. Shore and Shale's main games are never going to be improved. Now. And that's a problem. <laughs> because the main game has a lot of problems, even just, just what I've seen so far. And little bits of things that I do know about the future of the game. Like the levels of the champion, which I looked into to try and figure out... Um, how viable it would be to use, you know, the pseudo on my team, like I wanted to. That ain't getting fixed. That's the problem. <laughs> um, the ridiculous overleveling that happens because you have an automatic experience share that is always on and that you can never turn off is a problem. No, that, no, that technically they can fix. That's just a matter of adding the option to turn off the damn experience share. But... And that is something they can still do with the expansion packs. Hopefully, they can do that with an update. <laughs> but there's still there's just so many problems with the main game, and it's not going to fix that. So these expansion passes need to be even better than what a enhanced edition would normally add to the game, because enhanced edition fix the game not only by adding things to it, but by enhancing what was already there and fixing issues with it. This can't fix anything, so it, it's in, uh, expansions, the additions need to be twice as good to make up for it, especially when Sword and Shield are so all over the place uh, in terms of good decisions and the bad decisions. Graphically, it's not looking that much better so far. It looks pretty much the same. <laughs> So let's go back through this again. Um, this looks okay. I mean, you know, graphically, still don't look at those trees. Uh, uh, but utilizing things to make it a little bit, you know, better scenery at the very least. Fishing, slow pokes. What are those little? Cube things. I um, maybe just customizations, I guess, for the bike. Which thank God, because the the bike outfit. I'm mean, like the bike itself is fine. The bike outfit is still goddamn ugly. <laughs> Need a better bike outfit. Uh, the helmet. 
to at least using the graphics they have a little bit better. All right, so. This is Isle of Armor. Um, is that supposed to be Ireland? Shape-wise, it looks more Isle of Man. So I think that's what it's supposed to be. Which makes sense. Isle of Man is not that big. Um, to make sense for like a sub-region. And, okay, so like the entire place is a wild area-esque. There's no routes. They're just all kind of grouped up into sections. Not much there, though. I'm seeing, like, it's not that big. Granted, uh, the physical place might be a little bit bigger than what it looks like, but, like, if you look at the buildings, you got the dojo and the two towers and a building that you presume would start at. And that's it. The dojo, towers, and that, and yeah. So it's mostly just a wilderness. Which, I mean, it's okay. But it means there's not going to be that many people around. <laughs> I mean, it looks a little bit better. I mean, obviously, you know, they also mentioned the, the crown chandra here. But, you know, it the area does look a little bit better than um, Galar. Wild area purely because they're using more things in it. It's a little bit more varied. Um, there's more stuff going on within it, but it's still you know, graphically wise. It's not that you know, not an improvement at all, really. So there are two extra characters here. And yeah, like look how close the dojo is to where you start. It's not that far away. <laughs> And you can see one of the towers in the background, the top right. It's like, not much going on there. Nice yeah, looking dojo, at the very least. Master and various trainers. So you at least got some other trainers going on here. A little weird that he just gives you this legendary Pokemon in Kung Fu. I'm guessing them probably the reason to it. I mean, and if it's post-game, you being the champion, does kind of give you a, a little bit of advantage there in uh, him choosing you. I do like that it's not version exclusive. You can choose which one you want regardless of which version you play. That is nice. Um, we'll have to see how much of a challenge it really is if it's just you and Kubfu. And then getting the Urshifu. Darkest Lair hit there. And that's a new move right there. Actually, actually, no. No, I think that might just be Giga Impact. So there, if it, presumably they have unique moves and they're just not showing them yet. And then that was like all they showed. It, it, it's not particularly... It's not making um, the idol armor look particularly interesting or important or you're really having that much going on. Like, what's the story here? <laughs> like, they don't tell us anything. They don't give us any real hint about that. Um, beyond, you know, just personal growth through you know, reading a dojo. It's like, okay. Anything a little bit more serious going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Need a little bit more interesting. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see. And we got the Gigantamaxes. Obviously, we already knew the forms. Um, the names were kind of... Eh. The moves look alright, though. And... Yeah, ignoring opponent's abilities. Yeah, they did show 
So, hold on here. Yeah. Um, Inteleon's hidden Gastrodon despite Storm Drain. That is very useful. How much damage did it do? Hold on. Oh, it cut away. Did at least half. And ignoring Mimikyu's and... Did it Oko? It looked like it did. Yes, it could. Okay. I mean, they did say they were more powerful too, which is both unbalanced. Because, I mean, all, all the dynamics moves are more powerful than normal moves generally, outside of fighting and poison, which whose uh, powers are nerfed uh, because of their boosting attack and special attack. Um, so they know for the power because you're getting an advantage to your actual attack power to your entire side of the field. Um, nerfed a little bit too much <laughs> to where those typings aren't really as useful um, as Dynamax moves because the boosts only matter if you survive. <laughs> Don't really help if you're a glass cannon trying to use it to break something down. You're better off just not Dynamaxing. <laughs> um, but these ones being apparently more powerful than normal Dynamax moves has me a little bit concerned because the starters are already pretty good. Uh, pretty dang good in terms of their stats. Um, they haven't broken into competitive outside of Inteleon, uh, mainly because A, not having the hidden abilities. Hidden abilities are important, um, particularly for Cinderace. Um, the Barrow is such, I mean, we've seen it with Greenwich, it is such, such a good ability to be able to change your typing like that, stab with every move, as well as being able to avoid certain types of attacks with, you know, good selection of your moves and what new moves you carry and timing them right. Like, oh, I think they're going to use, um say, a uh, dragon move on me. Let me change my type to fairy. <laughs> Assuming it gets a fairy type move. I don't know if it actually does. I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't think it does, but who knows. Um, but still, you know, that sort of thing. Um, making them more powerful when it's also already ignoring opponent's abilities. Like, that alone is a really, really good effect to have. Because you have your normal ability, plus Mold Breaker... <laughs> It's really good. Um, I just don't think that the added strength was entirely necessary. Makes me a little bit concerned. I guess Chandelier gets Flash Fire. I don't know anyone that would run Flash Fire on Chandelier, but okay. Did have. Um, yeah, I guess I would think he would try to run things like something like Cursed Body or something. And then the outfits, I mean, we saw these. I do actually remember us seeing these before in the Pokemon Direct. Kind of go back a little bit more. Yeah, dress up like Rose, dress up like Marnie. Uh, like a punk. Some of the different like training classes and hairstyles and the like. This I really like. Um, new stuff for your elite cards. New coatings and borders and poses and stuff. I really like that. Some good ones in there too. Looking at them. <laughs> Little slowpoke scurrying array. They're scurrying array pretty dang fast for a slowpoke. And they purchased before August 31st. Connect the internet in game to receive Leon's cap and tights. You got a long time to get that if you really want it. Although, honestly, it's not a good outfit. <laughs> His outfit's so bad. And then and you get the, the Dynamaxis. So, Copperaja and. So, basically, two steel types Copperaja and Duraludon and Sword. And then Garboder and Charizard for some reason. And Shield. Why? <laughs> Why Charizard? Again. 
That doesn't really make that much sense. And then that was it. So yeah. Uh, it's not really selling me on improving Sword and Shield. You know, that they're you know, these DLCs won't really make it, you know, a better game. Overall, obviously, because obviously it's not going to affect the base game, but you, you, when you include the expansions, that it will be a better game overall. It just looks like more Sword and Shield, which is both good and bad. Just like Sword and Shield. <laughs> um, we'll see, though. Clubhouse Games. Very much looking forward to that. Zero Day Chronicles. Very much looking forward to that. Arms for S Smash Brothers. Just why? It's like I, I I look forward to the character. I I would like having an arms character in there. It makes a lot of sense. Just why now? Why not a year ago? It's pretty damn late. <laughs> um. In the pretty much the highlights for me personally. Just go back through double jack. Oh yeah, bravely default two of course. Fix the problems, and I will love it. Right now, very much makes bag. Kind of looks like you. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, the voice acting that's not going to get fixed. I already know that. Uh, I think that's. Oh yeah, in, in this little game, what was it called? Good job, I think. Is what it was called? Yeah, good job. I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. And obviously Animal Crossing, I just need to figure out how to purchase it. Pod racing! <laughs> uh, I don't remember if this is a game that already existed or if it's a new game that they're working on. I want to say it's the game that already existed. But still, uh, everything I've seen and heard about it is that um, there was a pod racing game before. It was a good game. Not a perfect game. It had a lot of flaws. Uh but it's still like a really fun game. Uh, so if it is just that game, eh, be fun to try. Yeah, and that's kind of everything for me. So I think that is it for now, as <laughs> as Nintendo says here. Uh, hearts go out to all of those impacted by COVID-19 during this challenging time. Mine does as well. I hope you're all having uh, managing well at home, having fun. When you can, amongst craziness of family, if you have any. Uh, you know, craziness in my family can be quite tiresome. Uh, part of the reason why it's been so long that I haven't had videos. One of a couple reasons. Obviously, I will get into that when I do do the CPU update video, which will be coming soon-ish. Um, God, this is a two-hour, 15-minute recording. I, was, I know that there's going to be a few cutdowns in there, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have been talking about this for so long. Get used to this when I do direct reactions, by the way. I talk in length about things, both in terms of predictions and aftermath. <laughs> Saw how much I ripped into Pokemon and Bravely Default 2. <laughs> um, yeah, I do intend to do these from now on, uh, all Nintendo Directs that I care about. Um, obviously, if there's like a direct about a specific game that I don't have interest in, I won't bother covering that. Uh, but general directs, I will do all of them. Pokemon directs, duh. Um, and any like future like Fire Emblem or Xenoblade or directs of that nature, you know, it's stuff of properties I like and would naturally want to watch. Um, I will cover. Um, CB update video will be coming out soon, and I will be doing a CPP anniversary video for April first as well, and then after that. And I will obviously cover this in more detail in the update video. Um, I will be looking at starting to upload those old Pokemon videos I had already recorded, editing them and everything. And then start recording some new stuff as well. Um, dates and scheduling and all that stuff will come later. I'll talk about that in CPP update video. But for now, I think that is everything. I hope... You enjoyed the direct, but there were some games here that interested you. I know I gushed a lot about Clubhouse games, of all things. Most people are probably not going to even think you know that highly of it or really care at all. But it's important to me. Everyone has those games that they cherish. is more important to them than others. 
I'm sure that there's some here that I completely overlooked that you were like, yeah, Pan's a Dragoon. And I was just like, oh, yeah, Pan's a Dragoon. I was like, actually, I might have actually missed that when we were going over things. <laughs> it wasn't that long of a spiel in here. Um, it was kind of easy to miss. Uh, actually, it might have been towards the end. Remember, right? Um, but still, I hope that there are things that you are looking forward to here. Uh, especially with these trying times, we all need to have a little bit of fun. That's for now, and I'll see you guys next time.